Edwards and Max and Julie Thompson. Tonight we're going to look at worlds in collision and the road that leads to nowhere. And what's going on here is that it's a very brief introduction to Emmanuel Velikovsky, who basically is a 20th century figure, and Samuel Butler, who lives between both the 19th and a, a little bit into the 20th century. And both of them are highly controversial figures. Now I want to start with Emmanuel Velikovsky, who was a Russian Jew, came from a well-off family and received very high levels of education. And uh, by the 1920s had qualified in medicine and was practicing as a psychiatrist and well and truly au fait with the works of Sigmund Freud. But he also had a lot of interest in what we might call harder core science. And he was one of the key figures that set up the University of Jerusalem. And Velikovsky is a very influential figure in some ways uh, and is a, a, almost a hated figure in other ways. And what happened was that he wrote a book in 1950 called Worlds in Collision. And in essence, Worlds in Collision is about the catastrophes that occur to planet Earth. We're used to thinking in terms of climate change as being the chief catastrophe. But uh, Velikovsky belonged to that school of biologists who believed that there were massive interventions that forced evolution along its inevitable path. Things like um, comets hitting the earth and so on and so forth. And he, he had a series of catastrophic interventions that in essence he derived, I think, from his Jewish understanding of the reading of the creation stories. Now, to show what his main idea was in terms of geologic, geological catastrophe, just think of the beautiful planets. Uh, we're used to the images that come from NASA. And here's the solar system, beginning with Mercury and going all the way out to Pluto. Uh, I don't know what the current state of the debate on whether Pluto is still regarded as a planet or not a planet, but anyway, that's the solar system as um, Velikovsky understood it. And what he proposed was really extremely interesting. He believed that Venus was originally a moon of Jupiter. So there's Jupiter, the gaseous giant uh, in the middle, what we call Venus orbiting round. And he said, OK, something occurred around about three and a half thousand BC and Venus flew out of its orbit and that caused geological catastrophe uh, back on Earth. Catastrophic planetary intervention uh, caused massive cultural changes on planet Earth. And he proposed this book, this thesis, in the 1950s. And there was an, uh, an immediate kind of outcry about the publication of the book. And the reason was that he proposed uh, that Macmillan, who were a highly respected academic press, publish the work. And various people had got wind of Velikovsky's ideas and they objected so strongly that Macmillan actually withdrew publication of the book, which had already sort of escaped out as a kind of a popular science book. And uh, they moved it over, I can't remember, may have gone to Doubleday to do the publishing, in other words, to a non-academic press. And the American Association for the Advancement of Science and, and people like uh, the, the astronomer uh, Shapley and uh, Carl Sagan, they conducted the equivalent of a trial that would have made, a heresy trial that would have made Galileo blanch. And so you've got this highly influential Jewish psychiatrist who extended the reach 
of his science into the fields of geology and astronomy uh, and came up, I think, with a, a not unreasonable reading of catastrophic events as being the um, main cause of evolutionary change on Earth and sort of micromanaged that into the biblical pattern of disasters. Well, the scientific establishment turned Velikovsky into the archetypal anti-science, well, I suppose, in popular opinion, he was a kind of folk hero because his works took off, um, particularly the Reader's Digest, which was uh, slanted towards a sort of a creationist stance, um, really went to town with Velikovsky, um, but lots of other uh, popular science reviewers thought it was a, a great work. So there was this figure who became hated, in a sense, by the scientific establishment, and at the same time was instrumental in setting up the University of Jerusalem. And it would not be true to say that all the scientific establishment hated him. There's a long and voluminous correspondence, I think, with Einstein. Uh, that was only published um, decades after um, Velikovsky died. So we've got Worlds in Collision. He also wrote another popular book that put him on the outer and very much on the outer. And the scientific press would not give Velikovsky a forum during the rest of his life to further explain his ideas. It had to remain in the realm of popular, maybe not all that uh, academic kind of science. So having said that, I'm just wondering, are there any comments that you would like to make at this point, any point of clarification about Velikovsky, um, Peter Lane, or anything come up on the chat pod? Uh, I think it's uh, interesting, think it's interesting that's... that's... Uh, Velikovsky's, uh, Velikovsky's uh, basic, uh, basic thesis basic has been thesis picked up by a, a whole variety of um, science fiction writers. Yeah, uh, I, I could be wrong, but I suspect that Velikovsky is so steeped in Jewish tradition that, that he needed to read out of uh, the early biblical books, you know, a kind of scientific understanding of what happened. And in that sense, I don't know that he's so different from Einstein, but Einstein's God wouldn't um, intervene, you know, like in the book of Exodus or, or with any of the miracle stories. Whereas I, I have the feeling that Velikovsky's God, uh, though it operates through catastrophe, there's still some kind of guiding hand there. But um, for Einstein, the idea of miraculous intervention, like you'd find in Exodus, is just not feasible. Uh, Max and Julie say they find it interesting how popular thinking can go at a tangent to science. Well, science, as far as I can see, is basically popular thinking um, amongst a certain group of people. And scientific revolutions happen when all of a sudden the popular model collapses. The, the great example is, of course, whether the earth is at the center of everything or whether the sun is at the centre, and um, it was popular science, well established, and with the theory of epicycles, they really did have that down to a very fine art. Uh, and so the, the popular scientific view um, actually had to give rise to something that was very unpopular. So uh, excellent question, Max. Okay, let's move 